Welcome. So we have here extended free body diagram problems for rigid body problems, torque, static equilibrium, things like that. And one thing that's cool about this particular chapter is that it's a chance for us to revisit a previous chapter, Newton's Laws, with an added twist. So we get a little bit of redemption arc if we didn't feel so good about it, but also if we do feel good about it, then we get to use the same stuff that we did, just extend that knowledge just a tiny bit. So we're always going to start with our sketch step when we're solving these problems. And how we're going to start is we want to drawing the problem as simple shapes. And we want to show all the interactions contact points. So fairly similar to what we're starting with forces. In fact, the next thing that we want to do is we want to draw an interaction diagram, just the same as we did with forces. But now the new thing is that a normal free body diagram is not going to be good enough because we want to see where things interact with. So we need to start with an extended free body diagram. And so what this means is that our recipient is a simple shape. And then we show where each force is being applied. So, right, we want to draw the point of application that we have this. And as we do this then in our organized step, we want to determine which forces are known known and unknown And then if we're in static equilibrium, we can set our axis to anywhere. If we're to hold the axis, we want to set our axis of rotation to what we're told to. So we're going to set it to where it is if it's told. And if it's not, which is going to be the majority of it because we've got static equilibrium problems, we get to choose. And if we choose a place where we have an unknown force being applied, then that force will still be unknown, but the torque will be zero because the distance will be zero. So what we usually want to do is write where the most unknown forces are applied. And we'll mark this point with kind of an axle rotation kind of thing. Once we have that, we want to draw our vector, the distance, but the vectoral distance from our axis of rotation to each force. And then we want to determine Right, the magnitude of the distance and the angles of our vector from the axis to each force. Once we have that, then as we solve, we're going to have something very, very similar to what we had in Newton's second law. We still have the sum of our forces in the x. And that's going to be, right, F1x plus F2x, so on and so forth. If we're in static equilibrium, this is going to be 0. But we can say, right, MAx, so 0 for static equilibrium. The sum of our forces in the y is going to be F1y 
plus F2y. And that's going to be the mass times acceleration in the y, and zero for static equilibrium. And so this is very familiar. We hopefully have a lot of experience with this. Our last thing, the new thing, is now the sum of our torques. So torque 1 plus torque 2, and so on and so forth, is equal to the moment of inertia times alpha. And this is also 0 for static equilibrium. So far, vast majority of cases we're going to do in this class, right? our accelerations and angular accelerations are going to be 0. This side is going to be 0. And so we're going to have all of our forces in the x sum to 0, forces in the y sum to 0, forces in the torque sum to 0. How do we find out what's going on with these torques? We want to use our right-hand rule to determine sine. By sine, we mean plus or minus for each torque. And then we can use either the vector relations for torque, that it's r cross f, or very often, right, just the magnitude relation that the torque is equal to the magnitude of r, the magnitude of f, sine of the angle of these between them. So once we have that, then we have now three different equations. And we're going to hope right, that we're going to solve any one equation, one unknown. But if not, then it's very similar to what we had with Newton's third law, where we had a system of equations. right? So we're still going to have that. We're solving a system of equations. Just in this chapter, we're only going to have right, these same system of equations instead of anything else. And do math and simplify. So that's how we get to all of these steps and how we get to solving all of this. So again, we're going to sketch, organize, solve. And now we get a nice week where it's very, very similar to stuff that we've previously done.